In the previous lecture, we understand how we can set up this project and add different files to it. Now in this lecture, I'm going to start with the header. So in the header, I'm going to create a navigation menu of this website. So I'm going to first specify class to this header and I'm going to name this class header area. Uh, just out of that, in this header, I'm going to create a division tag with the class container. And inside this div, I'm going to have a nav tag with the class nav. Inside this nav, I'm going to have my navigation menu. So I'm going to first have here an anchor tag for the navigation logo. So I'm going to first here add anchor tag with the class link. Along with that, I want to add here nav brand. And I also want to add here text light class. As you can notice, I'm going to add three classes to this anchor tag. First is a link, second is a nav brand, and third is a text light. When I press tab, I'm going to have all these three classes to this anchor tag. Now I'm going to just specify hash here because I'm not going to specify any href attribute to it. And in this anchor tag, and in this anchor tag, I'm going to add image tag to specify the site logo and in the source attribute I'm going to specify the path of my site logo so I'm going to first select asset folder then select the images and then select my logo.png file if you want you can specify all the attribute as well so I'm going to say here logo now just out of that once you have your site logo let's move on and create the toggle menu I'm going to simply add here a command and just say here toggle menu and just out of that I'm going to create here a button, a toggle button with the class toggle button. And in this toggle button, I'm going to have a spawn tag and I'm going to specify icon in this toggle button. So to add an icon in this toggle button, you just need to specify class to this spawn tag and add font or some classes to it. So to add hamburger icon, I'm going to add fast fa hamburger. So this class will add hamburger icon in this toggle button. Now once I have my toggle button, I'm going to create here multi-line command and just specify here navigation items and in this navigation items. Now just out of this command, I'm going to create here a division tag with the class collapse and along with that, I want to add ID to it. Because when I click on this toggle menu, I want to collapse this division tag. So I'm going to access this division tag with the ID. So I'm going to say here ID and specify toggle collapse. And in this division tag, I'm going to create my unordered list and specify class to it. So I'm going to specify now bar now. Along with that, I'm going to specify margin right auto. Now keep in mind, we don't have these classes yet. I'm going to create all these classes in this style.css file. And I'm also going to show you how you can create global classes in this website. So using it, you don't need to repeat yourself. Now just out of that, once you have this UL tag, I'm going to create here li tag with the class now link. And in this li, I'm going to have an anchor tag and specify here hash. And now in this anchor tag, I'm going to have my navigation items. So I'm going to say here home. So this is my first navigation item. So I'm going to specify class to it, which is link and text light. Save all the changes and open your browser. When you open your browser, you can notice you have your navigation menu here. Now just out of that, I'm going to copy these li tags and create few more navigation items. So I'm going to copy these li tags. Or you can just simply select this li tag and press shift alt down key. When you press it, you can notice we have the same li tag down here. I'm going to do the same and create few navigation items here. I'm going to name this home to people. I'm going to change this home to design. I'm going to specify my fourth navigation item which is travel and the fifth is going to be about us save all the changes and now if you open your browser you can notice you have different navigation items here now before we move on i want to just open the finished website on new tab 
So let me just open my finished website. Now once I open this finished website, you can notice I have this website logo and have different navigation items. And just after that, on the right side, I have this search box. So let me just create this search box. So I'm going to just back to my editor and right here just after this UL tag, I'm going to create here a division tag with the class search. And inside this div, I'm going to add here a simple form tag and specify class to it form group. I'm not going to specify action right now. And just out of that, in this form, I'm going to add a simple input tag. The input is a type of search, so I'm going to get rid of this text and say here search. And just out of that, I'm going to specify class to it. And the class is going to be input control and margin right SM2. Just out of these classes, I'm going to specify placeholder to it. And the placeholder is going to be search. Then I'm going to create here a button and specify class to it. The class is going to be btn, btn submit. Just out of that, I'm going to specify type of button. So this is a type of submin. And then in this button, I want to add an icon. So I'm going to simply add here i tag with different classes of font or some website. So I'm going to specify class here fast if a search so this will add search icon in this button as simple as that save all the changes back to your website if you open your website you have your website logo the hamburger menu different navigation items the search field and the search button now let me just add some style to it and make it more attractive just like this so i'm going to just back to my editor and open the style.css file. Now let me show you how you can style this header and make this header look like this. More attractive than this one. So I'm going to just open my style.css file. I'm going to first select the HTML tag. Then select the body. And to this body and to this HTML, I'm going to first specify height. And the height is going to be 100%. Just out of that, I'm going to specify width to it. And the width is going to be 100%. Then I want to remove margin from it. So I'm going to say margin 0. And padding is also going to be 0. So I'm going to remove margin and padding from this HTML and body. And specify height and width to this HTML. Now just out of that, just before this HTML and CSS, I'm going to import my different CSS files. So I'm going to add here a command and say import css files and just out of that here i'm going to add my variables files so as you know we just created here variable files in this asset folder in this css directory so i'm going to add this variable file right here and i'm going to specify first priority to this variable file because i'm going to use this variable file in all my css files so i'm going to put this variable at the top to add this CSS file in this style.css, I'm going to add here add the rate, import, and in the URL, I'm going to specify the path of this variable file. So I'm going to specify dot forward slash, then specify asset, select the CSS folder, and select my variable.css file. So now I can access any variables from this variable.css file in this style.css. Just out of that, now just out of that, I'm going to just select the body and to this body, I want to specify font family. So I'm going to say font and I want to specify normal font style. Font style is going to be normal. Then font width is going to be 900 and the size is going to be 1 rem. And I want to specify font family to it. So I'm going to call var function. And inside it, I'm going to call a simple variable. So I'm going to use this rel variable to this body. So I'm going to specify here font rel. Save all the changes and open the website. 
Now, when you open your website, you can notice we have different font family to these all navigation items. Just out of that, as I said earlier, I'm going to use CSS as a modular way. So I'm going to separate the header styling in the separate file. So I'm going to create a new file header.css and specify all the styling of the header in that file. So I'm going to just simply select this CSS folder and inside it, I'm going to create here header.css file. And before we add any styling in this header, I'm going to first include this CSS file in this style.css. So I'm going to add here a command and say include header file. And I'm going to just add here import statement and specify URL. And in this URL, I'm going to specify the path of this header file. So I'm going to select asset folder my CSS folder and the header.css file. Save the changes and back to your header.css file. And in this file, I'm going to specify different classes and specify styling to the header. So I'm going to just toggle this window on the right side like this. And I'm going to just specify styling to this header. So I'm going to first select the header, then select header area class and I want to select the nav class and to this nav I'm going to first specify display flex and the flex direction is going to be row when I save all the changes you can notice now this property will not apply to this element because if you open the style.css file you included this import statement just out of this body now keep in mind if you want to include any CSS file in the style sheet you need to put that file at the top. So I'm going to grab this file and put that file up here. Right? Save all the changes. When I save it, you can see the style is now applied to all these elements. Now just back to your header.css file and just start that. I'm going to select this header area again. So I'm going to copy it, paste it here and select the nav class. And just start that, I'm going to select toggle button. And to this toggle button, I'm going to say margin left auto. When I save changes, you can see we have this toggle button right here. Just out of that, I'm going to select the now bar now class. And to this class, I'm going to specify list style type is going to be none because I want to remove all these dots from this list. So I'm going to specify none here. And the display is going to be flex. The flex direction property is going to be row. Save all the changes. You can notice we have all these links on the same line. Now, just out of that, what I want, I want to remove this toggle button when we have the desktop viewport. So, I want to just add this toggle menu only when we have the tablet and the mobile viewport. So, I'm going to just specify here. I'm going to first select the toggle menu. So, I'm going to select the header header area and then select toggle button and just start that as you know we just selected this toggle menu up here so why don't we get rid of this styling and specify all the properties just out of this margin left property so i'm going to first specify display none so when i specify display none this will remove this toggle menu from this navigation menu but when I have the mobile or tablet viewport, I'm going to just specify display block to this property using JavaScript. We are going to learn all that later in this course. But just for now, just specify display none. Then specify border. And I want one pixel border. And border is going to be solid. And I want to specify color to it, which is light. Just out of that, I want to specify color. The text color is going to be primary color. Just out of that, I'm going to specify font size. The font size is going to be 1.5 RAM. To see this style, I'm going to just get rid of this display property. Just for now, when I save changes, you can notice we have this style to this toggle button. And I'm going to just specify padding. And the padding is going to be 0.1 RAM to the top and bottom and 1 RAM to the left and right. 
then I'm going to specify border radius and it's going to be 5 pixel and I want to specify box shadow to it. The box shadow property is going to be a variable. So I'm going to call a var function and call a variable box shadow. Just out of that, I'm going to just specify cursor pointer. I'm going to save all the changes. You can notice we have the styling to this beautiful toggle button. And then I'm going to specify the display property, which is none. Save all the changes. And now you're not going to get this toggle menu here because this is a desktop view. I'm going to add this toggle menu when we have the mobile or the tablet view. Just start this nav bar now. I'm going to select the collapse class. Let me show you the class first. I'm going to just select this collapse class, this one. So I'm going to just select this class. So I'm going to just say here collapse. And in this class, I'm going to specify display property, which is flex. And the flex direction is going to be row. And the width is going to be 100%. I'm going to specify 100% width to this collapse class. When I save all the changes, this will specify 100% width and display flex property to this collapse class. Now, just after that, what I want, I want to add some padding between these navigation links. So I'm going to simply select the nav bar nav class and then select nav link class. And I'm going to specify padding to it. And the padding is going to be zero for the top and bottom and one viewport width for the left and right. So I'm going to use here a CSS unit viewport width. Just out of that, I'm going to just select the nav bar now class again then select the now link and I want to select the link class and specify hover effect to it so I'm going to say here hover and specify color the color is going to be a var function and specify a variable here primary color just out of that I'm going to select the now bar brand class so I'm going to select nav then select navbar brand and specify font to it but before i specify any style to it i'm going to save all the changes you can notice we have some padding between these navigation items and just out of that i'm going to just specify font family to this site logo because if for example if you just remove the site logo and specify your site title then this property will change that font family so i'm going to just simply specify here font the font style is going to be normal then the font width is going to be 700 and specify size to it 1.1 RAM is the font size and I'm going to specify font family is going to be font mont this one save all the changes and just start that I'm going to just select the toggle button this one and I want to add hover effect to it so I'm going to simply add here a toggle button I'm going to select it and create a hover effect on this toggle button and specify color to it so when I hover on this toggle button I want to specify a color to it and I'm going to call gray variable here save all the changes and just out of that down here I'm going to style this beautiful search box so I'm going to just say here header and I'm going to select header area and I'm going to select form group class and to this form group I'm going to simply specify background and the background color is going to be a variable so I'm going to call here var function and specify light background color then I'm going to select box shadow and I want to add here a variable and specify box shadow variable here like this when I save changes you can see we have box shadow to, to this font group class then i'm going to just select header area again so i'm going to just copy this header area paste it down here and just out of that i'm going to select my input control and to this input control i'm going to first remove the border so i'm going to say border none then i want to add padding to it so i'm going to say padding 
is going to be 0.6 RAM to the top and bottom and 1 RAM to the left and right. When I save all the changes, this will add some padding to this input text box. And just for that, I'm going to specify background and background is going to be transparent. Then I'm going to specify here font normal. The font style is going to be normal. The width of this font is 300 and I want to specify size to it 0.9 rem and specify font family which is font rail. Save all the changes. This will add this font family and the font size to this input text box. Just out of that, I'm going to simply select this button. So I'm going to select the header, then select the button. And to this button, I have BTN, BTN submit class. And to this button, I'm going to simply specify border, none. I'm going to remove border from this button and specify here padding. The padding is going to be 0.8 rem to the top and bottom and 1 RAM to the left and right. Then I'm going to specify cursor and the cursor is going to be pointer and I want to specify transition which is going to be on the background color. Background 0.5 second is. Save all the changes and using this property I'm going to smoothly change the background of this button. So I'm going to simply select this button again. So I'm going to copy this selector, paste it down here and create hover effect on it. And to this hover effect, I'm going to simply specify background color and call a simple primary color to it. And just specify the primary color to this background. Save all the changes and when you hover on this button, you can see we have beautiful hover effect on this button. The styling is now ready, but as you can see, the Finnish website has a different styling to this navigation menu and you are going to get the different styling here. This header is not look like the Finnish header template. That is because of we specified different global classes to this header menu. Using the global classes, I am going to specify different styling to the HTML element. For example, let's say you want to specify color white to this navigation items. Then you simply select this navigation item and specify color white to it. But if you create a global class, then you can simply specify that color to this navigation item by specifying a global class. So if you want to specify color to this navigation item, you could simply create a class text color and specify color white to it. And using that class, you can change the color of any of your HTML element by specifying the class in the HTML. So in the next lecture, I will show you how you can create a global styling for this template. So you can save you a lot of time. So I will see you in the next one.